Some of you may know, if you're from Texas, I know we have a few Texans here, that the state of Texas is running its primaries right now, primary elections, you know, to choose the candidates for governor and other state officials. And um, I read in the paper the other day that in the primary for, a lot of people in Texas like to run for office. There's like 10 or 12 people running in the primary for uh, governor, that's all right. One of them had his name legally changed, yes, to secede. His name is now secede <laughs> on the theory that this will get more votes in Texas if, on, on the ballot. So uh, secession is in the air nowadays, or maybe always has been in one form or another. I have a little secession collection. Here's something from the Wall Street Journal a few years ago. A range of groups, not just Texas, are advocating secession. Uh, Hawaii, which was independent once, there's a group trying to become the nation of Hawaii. There's a website for a group called the North Star Republic with a mission to establish Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan as an independent state. Vermont wants to become a sort of independent people's republic up there. Uh, a group called Christian Exodus, it has the purpose of transforming South Carolina into a Christian-run nation. So, and they even had a, um, a conference a few years ago of secessionists up in uh, Vermont from all over the place, Alaska, Hawaii, the Southern, Co the Christians, Puerto Rican independence. So in other words, this is still an issue around in, in our life uh, today. Um, then this, here's a, see how history and uh, connects, this is a magazine called MBA Jungle. That's what it's like out there, folks, if you get a business degree, the jungle. But they had this article a few years ago, a friend of mine passed it along, the 100, no, the 25 dumbest business decisions of all time. So one of them was um, the Ford Edsel, some of you may remember that, the worst car ever produced. Um, the Red Sox selling Babe Ruth to the Yankees, bad move. New Coke, they introduced New Coke, it was horrible, they had to go back to old Coke. But the worst business decision in history was the secession of the South. The South secession is the single stupidest, costliest business decision in American history. And here's how they describe it. A dreamy-eyed attempt to preserve a feudal, agricultural, morally bankrupt, slave-based economy against the juggernaut of industrial capitalism. So this is the beardy in view now penetrating American business schools. Um, you wonder why we're in a recession. <laughs> That's what they're teaching them up there. Um, <laughs> it's interesting to note, though, that the current view of the Old South among historians, which may not be 100% accurate, but it's the current view of the Old South not as a backward agrarian, decrepit society, but as a dynamic, expanding, capitalist, profit-making society, doesn't fit this image uh, of, you know, of, a, of an old agrarian, you know, romantic society of fighting the juggernaut. And by the way, the North was not a juggernaut of industrialism either, as we have said. All right, but that's, that's a different point. So, but in other words, the idea, of, now the idea of secession or linked but not the same thing ideas such as states' rights and nullification uh, have been around since the beginning of the United States, right? Go back to the beginning, the Virginia and Kentucky resolutions of Jefferson and Madison in 1798. Basic, they didn't talk about secession, but they talked about the right of a state basically to nullify national laws which they didn't approve of. Same thing happened, of course, in the nullification crisis over the tariff in the 1830s. Um, in the 1850s, North, a few northern states tried to nullify the fugitive slave law. So in other words, the balance of authority between the federal government and the state governments has always been, and still is today, a point of dispute in our constitutional system. But it, the point is that nullification is not the same as secession, and in some ways is the opposite of secession. Nullification is an attempt to preserve the Union while protecting what any, a, a local area or a state feels are its vital interests. It's a way of staying in the nation 
with, without losing your, you know, without, without uh, having your interests suffer. Secession is the opposite. It is leaving the nation. Now, is secession constitutional? Who knows? The people who wrote the Constitution did not anticipate states leaving the Union. There is nothing in the Constitution allowing for any mechanism by which a state may leave the Union. Um, but on the other hand, there's nothing in it that says they may not leave the Union. It is just unanticipated. The argue, trying to argue whether it's constitutional or not is absurd because the founders simply did not think about the possibility of states seceding once the, the Constitution had been adopted. Um, the Southern argument, which has existed, you know, existed for a long, long time, was basically this. The Constitution is a compact, a, an agreement, a contract among sovereign states. In order to create a federal government, states ceded some of their sovereignty to the federal government. For example, they can't coin money or, or, or enact treaties with foreign countries. But they retain a great deal of sovereignty, and moreover, they can opt out. If they don't like it, they can leave. Okay, it's a contract, we're leaving. We don't like this compact, we're resuming our full sovereignty. That's, in a nutshell, the argument for secession. The argument against it, which Lincoln puts out in the first inaugural address and later in the Gettysburg Address, is simply the Constitution did not, the nation predates the Constitution. The nation was created by the Declaration of Independence. It was created by the people, not by the states. The states are not sovereign, the people are sovereign. And in their sovereign capacity, they created a federal government. We've had two constitutions. We had the Articles of Confederation before the Constitution. Um, we might have another one, but the nation is separate from the constitutional structure, says Lincoln. And therefore, it cannot be dissolved by a single unit uh, in the constitutional argument. That's Lincoln's argument. You can take it or leave it as you see fit. Um, what was unusual, the, the threat of secession was hardly unusual. All through the period, the 15 years before the Civil War, as the slavery issue becomes more and more central, some Southerners are talking about secession as a threat. If, and, um, you know, if, if, if the Republicans win in 1856, we're going to secede, etc. In fact, Part of this was just to frighten the opposition. Thaddeus Stevens, the radical Republican, said, we have saved the nation so often, I'm afraid we're going to save it to death. <laughs> Southerners threaten secession. There's a fear in the North. There's a compromise. And then things move along. That's what, that's what uh, he said. The other thing to bear in mind as we head toward this is it was by no means clear in 1860 or early 61 that the, that there, that the alternative that the rejection of compromise was war. It's not as if people knew that war was, was the only alternative. Some people said, no, let us not do anything and secession will collapse from within. So some people said, no, we must create a compromise to resolve this crisis. Some people said, no, what's the big deal? We have talked about it a long time. Let's see what happens. But rather few people were planning war, but many people were willing to accept war rather than give up their basic beliefs, north or uh, south. 